Good morning. It's so cold out today that Jambo was a little bit rough on her start. Butterball spent a total of three minutes outside and she already wants back in. It is currently 19 degrees. How do you feel about that? I want to go back to bed. Yeah, right. <laughs> It just looks cold out there. You know, if you live in Michigan, you freaking know, man. This time of year, look at this. <gasps> it's gray. Everyone's skin is flaking. Everyone needs 500 chapsticks in their pocket. Oh, and it's a little bit harder to start in the morning, but I have so much more energy than I did yesterday, so I'm glad to be in a good mood. Just having coffee and getting ready to go to Pilates class this morning. Look how cute our bathroom lights are. And then it's funny because I've been going to the bathroom um, in here and then every time I would freak out thinking someone's looking in the window and finally I put this handkerchief on the window. It was like literally, it would bother me every time for like the last six months and then all I had to do was just like put this scarf on the window. And the pink is already almost washing out of my hair. Can you guys believe this? I mean, I know that it's a semi-permanent, but geez, I only washed it one time. Okay, I'm half awake. I gotta go get out in the cold and get Jambo started. Ah, just look at that sky. As always, I feel five zillion times better. Something about today, the room was like super warm. And because it's so cold out, oh, it felt so good. I feel like everyone was, was feeling the vibrations today. So um, I have something special planned for you guys. We're gonna head back home and I'm gonna teach you a special skill today. Something that you could use for gifts or, I don't know, just for enjoyment, just for fun, just to try something new out. But first, coffee. How cool is my coffee mug? Yeah, I bring coffee to Pilates and then soda water to my sculpt class because sculpt is a lot more intense, so. Yeah, but can you see this pink? It's already almost washed out of my hair. Oh well. So for any of you who are also looking for like some gift giving ideas, this is the clean canteen and I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually still steam coming out of here. Look at that. So this keeps your coffee hot for hours. It's a double insulated thermos and they come in like really funky groovy colors and I've had this one for like four years. Okay, now we're ready. Okay guys, you ready for what we're about to get into today? So I thought it'd be really fun because I've gotten into the art of rug making to teach you how to punch needle your own rug. So you wanna just make sure that you have a nice clear space to work in. It doesn't have to be huge because this is the size that we're gonna be working with today. So I've organized all the materials that you're gonna need. So there's several vendors on Amazon that will sell a full blown kit. And this is usually what's gonna come in the kit. So first is gonna be your monk's cloth. I can't really remember the name. They usually just send you a square, so I'll actually put a link for the cloth that I actually use for the larger scale works, but they usually only send just a little bit, you know, for practice or for one actual project. And then you can get the round hoop. Now I actually only use this for practice just to kind of get used to the actual act. Then they'll also send you a couple different lengths of your threading wire which is very simple. Actually, the little tape piece on the end of mine came off, so I just, you know, compromised with some blue tape here. This is actually my cat's newest toy, actually, as well. So be careful of your cats, because they're gonna bend the hell out of this thing. 
but this is the little threading wire the company that I ordered my kit from sent me two different thread punching needles so this one would be more of just the classic one and if you notice this one's not adjustable so you're really only going to get one length on your punch needle so imagine that this is the rug that it's going into and then pulling out and then going back in and then pulling out there's only one length here whereas this pen actually has the adjustment here so for example mine's on the longest punch needle and then you can go on down to like a pretty short loop so basically what I mean by that is once you punch it through when you turn it around to the front of your project that loop is just going to be shorter or longer depending on the length that you set it on so let's go ahead and just jump right in and I'll show you how I am making these large scale works so first things first you have your little um, loop thing here and it's pretty self-explanatory you're just going to put this over and then you're gonna put the inner loop in, squeeze it in there, and then you wanna add a little pressure here and then just pull the outer edges out to make sure that it's nice and tight. But it's easier to punch when you have a nice tight cloth in the middle. The next thing you wanna think about is that your image is actually gonna be in reverse. You're basically gonna be working from the back. So you wanna think of how it's going to appear on the front. Always keep that in mind. So what I do is I go in on the back and I just take a simple um, colored pencil or a graphite pencil and draw my image on the back. I usually use a sepia tone colored pencil because the graphite tends to wear off a little bit quick, but it looks like I just have a graphite pencil here available, so I'm just gonna go ahead and... So then you can just draw your image on the back. I'm just gonna draw three little berries for a little let's just do a holly leaf let's do something festive you can do whatever you want really you can do something a little more perverse you know a little more you can go simpler you can go more intense whatever just do something that feels good to you now with a smaller space like this you're probably gonna want to go with something simpler and you can be a little bit more liberal of course when you have the bigger palette set up. I remember drawing these when I was a little girl all the time. I don't know why, like around Christmas time. Probably just because it was easy. <laughs> okay, so here we have our holly leaf. I just wanted to do something really simple for you just to kind of demonstrate this technique. So after that you want to pick your colors and um, I actually use Lovecraft online and what's cool about the shop is that the skeins are actually and the skein is just the oblong shape of yarn but the skeins are actually pretty cheap they range from three to ten bucks each ten would be on the higher end if you're doing going for a more higher quality material and then the three bucks is kind of like you know the cheaper acrylic blends and stuff like that so I usually go for like cheap to mid-range. Up me and buy hat, as my uh, Cambodian friends would say, no problem. You also want to think about the thickness of the yarn. And this is a, actually a problem that I ran into because obviously any new practice is a learning curve. And I ordered all the wrong types of yarn because they were all different weights. So you want to make sure that you get the same weight of yarn. There's corresponding numbers for each weight. So I actually just by bulky weight um, and that's usually I think a uh, size four or five so just really be very careful when you're ordering your yarns otherwise when you do your punch needle the sizes are gonna be different if that's a look that you're going for fine but don't make the mistake that I did and order different weights of yarns because one it might not even be able to be threadable through your needle that's a problem i ran into the yarn was too thick and then i also had gotten a yarn that was way too thin it was like a two or three or something so make sure that your weights and the bulk of the yarn is all pretty similar so that you have a nice evenness in your project you're going to want to pick colors that are unique to you unique to the project that you're working on i'm going to go ahead and grab my bundle of yarns i have a lot of yarn wrapped up now um, this is my first bin. <laughs> Just to find a bin, you know, something to keep all your yarns in. Because this, this shit's going to get out of hand pretty quick. And these things, when they come unraveled, you got to make sure that you keep it tidy, okay? Because otherwise, you're going to be, the cat's going to be in there, there's going to be knots in your yarn. 
it's gonna be chaos. Let's go ahead and start with the holly balls. I don't really have a bright rod, so I'm gonna use this kind of pumpkin spice orange color. I suggest a high quality pair of scissors so that you don't have to fumble with um, cutting your yarn. Here's your needle. You see this little hole in the top here? That's where you're gonna put your threading needle through. So it takes a little bit of, you know, getting used to. So you're gonna pinch the end of the wire and then you're gonna place the wire in the hole and then down the shaft of the tube. Okay, that sounds really sexual, sorry. But you're gonna put it right there in the hole and then thread it down. It's gonna take a little practice, but get it down there. It's a little bit awkward. So then it's gonna look like this. There's gonna be a little bit of wire coming out the bottom and then your top tape part up here. Now take the end of the yarn and then just put it through that little loop on the bottom. So just like that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the top all the way up and boom. So your needle is threaded. So see how the yarn is coming through that hole. That's very important. I actually threaded the needle wrong the first time I did this and it was ridiculous. I'm gonna actually adjust my length a little bit because it's on the longest length. So I'm gonna take this down. So push, the, push it in, come on down. I think I'll come down to the second longest length. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're just literally gonna follow the shape of what we've drawn. Now, I would highly suggest following all the way around the outside and then continue all the way up into the inside of the shape. That's gonna give you a really nice aesthetic and a nice pattern. People are gonna say, maybe this is wrong. I don't know. This is just the way I learned and, and like how I found the best look. So then we're just gonna push the needle all the way through. Make sure that you get the needle all the way down to the very, very bottom, okay, before pulling back up. Then we're gonna pull up and you can use this hand as a little bit of pressure to keep the tautness of the punch needle and then just continue. So I would just go in small spaces. Don't take the loop far, if you know what I mean. So I'm not basically going from here to here. I'm just going from here and then I'm going about less than a quarter of an inch for my next one. And then I'm just gonna continue all the way around. Another thing that you wanna keep focus on is that there is a lot of slack with your yarn. Otherwise, this is gonna to pull too tight and then the loops are gonna get small on the back. So you wanna keep your slack running here and I just kinda of drape it off. Believe me, you will find your rhythm with this. Okay, once you have your initial shape, I just did one berry. Once you're done with one color, you're just gonna cut a little snip and then leave it. So I'll show you what it looks like from the front. Boom! You got yourself some punch needle, baby. I went with a little bit of a longer loop. As you can see, I went with the second longest loop or longer loop that I've got. And as you build your image, you can actually do some longer loops, you can do some shorter loops, like say you're doing like a flower scene or something like that and you want maybe one flower to pop up and then you want the grass or another flower to recede, you would just go for a shorter length on the receding part. And then when you're working with a bigger project, of course, um, you won't have to change the colors of your thread so much. Now, for all of you out there who jumped on the punch gun phase. I, I actually really wanted one of those in the beginning, but my advice to you, my advice to you, my dears, is before going in and spending like $200 on a punch gun, find out if you actually really like it. Go with the old school methodology. Just get one of the little punch needles and see if you like it. In my opinion, I'm actually finding that I love, 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 love the meditative aspect of the time it takes to punch needle. So I don't think I'm gonna be investing in a punch needle gun anytime soon. That feels very abrasive. It feels like, hey, let's just get this stuff done. I'm sure it's really fun, but, and maybe I will one day, but at the same time, I love the act of how slow this is. And I don't know, I just get so much satisfaction from it. Before we go forward, I'm gonna actually adjust the length to a little bit shorter so we can get it. I'll show you a different length. Oh, 
there we have it. So here you can see that the pile on the red, of course, is just slightly higher than the pile on the green. So that's going to read as if the berry was closer and then the leaf was slightly behind. And so again, once you get your other colors like in the background and everything like that, you can actually adjust from the front and just kind of play with it the pile and just kind of make sure it's a little bit neater and tidy because sometimes the loops actually get interdispersed with another loop so you have to untuck it if that makes any sense. All right guys, I hope this was informative for you and maybe you could even use this technique to create presents for your family. It's just a really fun, easy, simple methodology going back I don't even know how many years but I remember doing punch hole rugs when I was a little girl and I don't know, there's something about it that just brings such a deep satisfaction so please let me know how your punch needling goes. And if this video was helpful to you, please consider giving it a like. It really helps out my channel right now. I'm looking to build and grow this channel and continue bringing you more consistent content over the coming months and the coming years. But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me and let me know how your punch needling goes. I'll see you in the next Vlogmas. Bye babies.